In this lesson, we are going to study slopes, parallel, and perpendicular lines. <clears throat> Suppose that we have two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2. The slope of the line containing these points is defined to be y2 minus y1, this distance, all over x2 minus x1. This y2 minus y1 here, we call that the rise, and we call this difference run. Take note that for slopes, the order of this matters. So for example, if you started with this point x2, y2, for y2 minus y1, you should also start again with this point for the difference in the x coordinates. So if I wanted to start with this point x1, y1, the slope is y1 minus y2 all over x1 minus x2. What is the inclination of a line? The inclination of a line is the smallest positive angle it makes with the positive axis. So for example, this is our line. This is the inclination of your line. It's the smallest positive angle it makes with the positive x-axis. If our line is like this, this is our inclination of the line. The slope and the inclination of a line is related by this formula. The slope is equal to tangent of theta. So for example, what is the slope of a line with an angle of inclination of 45 degrees? From our formula, m is equal to tangent of 45 degrees. And tangent of 45 degrees is equal to 1. Let us find the slope of the line containing the points negative 2, 1, and 3, 4. So using our formula for the slope, it's just given by the difference in y-coordinates. Suppose I start with this point, 3, 4. So from the y-coordinate, it's 4 minus 1. All over the difference of the x-coordinates, I should still start at this point. So that's 3 minus negative 2. This is equal to 3 fifths. Now let us look at the different cases for the slope of a line. So for example, I have this increasing line. What can we say about its slope? Uh, suppose I get two points from the line. Let's say these two points. Now remember that as you go from one point to another point, if you go up, then that means that the rise is positive. If you go down, the rise is negative. For the run, if you go to the right, the run is positive. And if you go to the left, the run is negative. So for example, on the blue line, if we go from this point, the origin, up to this one, how do we go about it? So from this point to this point, we go up by two units. So that's positive. Actually, our rise is positive 2, and our run from, we're already here, we go to the right by 1 unit. So the run is also positive. So hence, our slope is positive. What about this case? So again, we will take these two points. If I go from this point to this point first, I will go down by 2 units. So the rise is negative. And then, from here to here, I am going to the right. So that means the run is positive. Hence, the slope here is negative. What about if we have a horizontal line? If we get these two points, did we go up or down? No, our rise is equal to zero. Since our slope is rise over run and the numerator is 0, that means that the slope is equal to 0. If you have a vertical line, if you get these two points, we do have a rise because either we go up or we go down. It depends which point you start with. But you will not go left or right, correct? So this means that the run is 0. So if the run is 0, our slope is rise over run. The denominator is zero, which tells us that the slope is undefined. So if you get confused, 
with the scenario of having zero slope and undefined slope, all you have to do is to draw the line and to determine which one is zero. Is your rise zero or is your run equal to zero? To summarize what we have learned, if you have an increasing line, just like this one, the slope is positive. If your line is decreasing, the slope is negative. The slope of a horizontal line is zero and the slope of a vertical line is undefined. When are two lines parallel? Two lines are parallel if they are always the same distance apart and will never meet. Meaning to say, no matter how you extend them, they will never intersect. If two lines are parallel, that means that they must have the same steepness. Because if one line is steeper than the other, let's say this and then something which is steeper, right? Eventually, they will intersect. So hence, the two lines should have the same steepness. But if you have the same steepness, that means that they must have the same slope. So hence, two non-vertical lines are parallel if and only if their slopes are equal. What about perpendicular lines? First, what do I mean by perpendicular lines? Perpendicular lines are two lines that meet or intersect each other at right angles. So for example, these two lines here are perpendicular. The angle formed between the two lines is 90 degrees. When are two lines perpendicular? Two lines are perpendicular if and only if the slope of one is the negative reciprocal of the slope of the other. So going back to this one, for example, this is our line 1 and this is our line 2. And M1 is the slope of line 1 and M2 is the slope of L2. The theorem is saying that M1, the slope M1, is the negative of the reciprocal of M2. Equivalently, this is saying that their product is equal to negative 1. So for example, if M1 is 4, what is M2? M2 must be equal to the negative of the reciprocal 1 fourth. Or if M2 is 3 fifths, M1 must be negative of the reciprocal. So that's negative 5 thirds. Let us consider this example. Determine whether the lines 3y equals negative 4x plus 3 and 3x minus 4y equals 8 are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Let us recall that to answer this question, we just have to determine the slopes of these two lines. And how do we get the slopes of these two lines? We just have to write the equation of your line in slope intercept form because the slope intercept form y equals mx plus b gives us the slope of your line. The slope of your line is just the coefficient of x. So for example, line 1, you have 3y equals negative 4x plus 3. In slope intercept form, when we solve for y, we divide both sides by 3. This is the same as negative 4 thirds x plus 1. For the second line, we have 3x minus 4y equals 8. We have 3x minus 8 equals 4y. I'm isolating y. So we have 3x minus 8 all over 4 is equal to y. But this is 3 fourths x minus 2. So therefore, for the first line, the slope is negative 4 thirds. For the second line, the slope is 3 fourths. Notice that they are negative reciprocals of each other. So therefore, these two lines are perpendicular. Next, let us show that this four points, P, Q, R, and S, are vertices of a parallelogram. Now, it helps to plot your points first so that you can determine 
which points to consider. So here is a plot of your four points. From the graph, it looks as if it is really a parallelogram. However, you cannot prove something simply by drawing it. So you really have to prove it. What is the definition of a parallelogram? A parallelogram has two pairs of parallel lines. So based from the graph, we want to show that QR is parallel to PS. And we want to show that RS is parallel to PQ. So hence... To show that QR is parallel to PS, let us get the slope of the line containing QR. This is Q and R using our formula rise over run QR. I will start with Q. So we have difference of Y coordinates is 6 minus 3 all over 5 minus negative 4. So that's 3 ninths or... One third. The slope of the line containing PS. P and S. I will start with P. Difference of Y coordinates is 1 minus negative 2. So that's 1 plus 2 all over. Difference of X coordinates 6 minus negative 3. So that's 6 plus 3. Again, this is 3 ninths or 1 third. Since MQR is the same as the slope MPS. We have shown that QR is parallel to PS. Similarly, let us get the slope of the line containing RS. R and S. Difference of Y coordinates is 3 minus negative 2. So that's 3 plus 2 all over negative 4 minus negative 3. This is 5 over negative 1 or negative 5. The slope of the line containing PQ, P and Q, so that's 1 minus 6 all over 6 minus 5. Negative 5 over 1. So they're both equal to negative 5. So therefore... The slope of the line containing RS is the same as the slope of the line containing PQ. This means that RS is parallel to PQ. So from this two, we can now conclude that PQRS is a parallelogram.